So one of two things will be going through your head right now. You will either be saying, what on earth is that car? I have never seen it before in my life. Or there's a few of you that will be saying, I haven't seen one of those for years and years. This is a VW variant 1973. It is the latest conversion from edubconversions.co.uk. My name is Kit Lacey, and let's have a look around this latest project. So this customer came to us off the back of the work that we'd done on our previous conversions, specifically things like our BMW 700, and obviously all of the camper vans that we've been churning out over the last few years. And he wanted something reasonably specific, but something that was well within what we were capable of doing at EDUB Conversions based on the technology that we've already used. So this features brand new Calb batteries that we've been pioneering for the last few years, and also a Tesla drive unit, if you believe it. And the pure purpose of that was that this particular customer um, had a specific pedal set up um, for mobility uh, reasons, and so wanted to keep those retained and therefore wanted an automatic conversion. So Tesla was the way to go. And I know what you're thinking, it is about time that we got a yellow car at E-Dubs. It's something that for some reason strikes quite a fancy with some members of our audience. But one of the downsides of a yellow car is it does attract quite a lot of flies. So this particular vehicle posed quite an opportunity and a bit of a challenge for us at E-Dub. So normally when we take a classic vehicle, the number one place to put your batteries for the electric conversion is going to be in the engine bay. The engine is coming out, there's suddenly a big space, let's put batteries in there instead. This particular customer had two reasons why that wasn't going to work for him. Number one is he really values his boot. And in the VW variant, the engine is really low down. And so if you were gonna take up any extra space, you'd have to come into the boot to achieve that. And the customer said, no way, the boot needs to stay the same. Um, the other reason was, is that the variant naturally has a bit wobbly steering, like most VWs around this period as we're finding. So the front of the vehicle is actually traditionally quite light so that means that the steering can be a little bit airy. So one of the things that he mentioned was that if we were gonna split the battery pack, that that would actually improve the weight distribution over the front axles and help with that steering. And we found that that has made a really big difference. So in this particular model, it's our smallest E30 pack that's been installed. And that's split 16 modules, eight of them in the back in the engine bay and eight of them in the front. And we'll show you those in a little bit. So what's in the bonnet? I hear maybe three or four of you asking. So originally in the VW variant, this was a storage space. There was a spare tire in here that was necessary to power your windscreen washer fluid. But now we've added half a battery pack. So let's take a look. So in here we have, as I said, 50% of the total battery pack that's been installed into this vehicle. 16 modules in total, eight of them are within this box. Now this is the remote box to the main box that's in the rear of the vehicle. The rear of the vehicle has the main um, master Orion battery management system and has all of the contactors in there as well. And this box simply acts as a remote. So it's got a, a safety disconnect fuse in there, it's got a contactor in there, it's got its own battery management system in there as well, and that's it. It's a really simple installation. Also in the front here, we have a spare wheel mount, which would normally be on the top here, but we've cleared it so you can see what's going on underneath because uh, originally the spare wheel would sit in the in the front here, uh, but we've had to move that up a bit to accommodate this larger battery box. On the side, we've got our charger. That's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. So that capable of charging, recharging this vehicle uh, in around six hours. We also here have our DC-DC converter. This is the best DC-DC converter on the market, perfectly matched to the voltage of this vehicle. We also have our brake booster system, which we've managed to cram into. This frame here is actually original, um, and we managed to fit our brake booster system around that same framework. So that works really, really well, and it's really tidy, rather than having something big and out of the way that's making a bit of noise. And obviously cable storage, so our cables are stored just down the side here as well. So now we move onto the boot. 
So as we said before, this particular space has been left completely untouched so that the customer can still use the amount of luggage that he wants to use. But the real business is underneath this space. And so by the power of movie magic, we are going to reveal to you what is underneath the boot. Smooth. So here we have the main battery box that uh, drives the entire vehicle. We've got our battery management system in here, all of our contactors, fuses. We've also got aux fuses in there for accessories like our charger and our DC-DC and our heater. We'll tell more about the heating when we get inside the cab a little bit later on. It's also really important to point out that this battery box is part of the subframe that we've designed at EDUB Conversions. So the subframe itself is attaching onto the original mounting holes. We haven't made any more mounting holes in this. We haven't drilled anything or cut anything We're using the same locations to mount onto. Similar to the camper vans, it's got an engine brace bar that goes underneath that connects up onto the side rails. And it's got a bar that connects onto the back of the gearbox mounting as well. And that's where the Tesla drive unit sits in this conversion. Again, custom drive shafts are connecting all those things together and a custom cooling system as well that's keeping everything ticking along perfectly. Now with electric conversions, there are lots of challenges of how to integrate the new electric technology with the classic car. And one of those renowned challenges that we are faced at EDUP services is of course, where do we put the charging socket? So as with all of our conversions, we like to pride ourselves on integrating the technology really seamlessly with the classic car. We aren't all about having quite bling dashboards and LEDs everywhere and things that don't really look uh, in place with the vehicle. What we love is when people take a look at the car and say, wow, that's a great classic. And then they look again to say, hang on, there's something a little bit different about what's going on here. On this particular arrangement, there are only two or three changes to the original variant dashboard. Talking about the dash itself, you've got the two dials. Now they've been made by um, a company over in America called Speed Hut. They've provided us with two dials here and we've designed them to configure and to show your miles per hour with your tripometer. You've also got your battery level, your state of charge. Um, in this particular conversion, you are gonna get 100 miles range. So 100% is about 100 miles left of range. So leaving that with the original percentage numbers works great for this. We've also got our power gauge that's displayed in amps. How many amps are you using to drive? But also what we love is it shows you how many amps you're gaining back from either regen or that dial actually goes live when you're charging. So you can actually see that your charging is working and that it's charging you at a really decent rate. And then finally, you've got your motor temperature, which if you've seen some videos from us in the past, motor temperature is one of the first diagnostics tools that we put onto this dash. The other thing that's changed here is this little switch here. Again, we've tried to integrate something that's really minute and in keeping with everything else without looking too out of place. This is actually your heater switch. So we've integrated a heater brick underneath the dash that's plumbed into the pre-existing um, piping that's gonna be kicking out heat to the right areas. And it's got three speeds on the fan and a heat, high voltage heater element that's running from the rear battery box down to the front here to give you heat onto your feet, which is where you primarily want your heat. But also the levers still work so you can send that heat up onto your windscreen or onto your face as well. As we also mentioned before, this particular customer has got a, uh, a steering arm here. So uh, this arm is actually for your throttle and for your brake. So on the floor, there's, there's no clutch. Um, this particular lever is pushing down on the throttle and also pushing down on the brake as well. And we've integrated that by using a throttle pot, which is actually part of the rear subframe. Everything else is the same. So your lights are still the same, your heated winds, your rear heated windscreen is still the same, your hazard is still the same, everything else stays identical. The only slight little change is that down here, where the, because it was an automatic before, where the automatic gear selector used to be, we've repurposed that enclosure with a reverse um, and forward dial. Also our new eco lock button. Now the Eco Lock is a really fun feature that we've come up with very, very recently at EDUB Services. And it's to do with the idea that what we found while test driving so many electric classics over the last few years is the biggest enemy to your range is a heavy right foot. Sometimes there's not much you can do about that, but if you can have something in the car that can put a nice limit on the power that you're able to pull out of the battery bank, then that is the best way to preserve your range. And that's exactly what the Eco Lock does. The Eco Lock puts 
a limit onto a lot of things around the vehicle in terms of the power that you need to use. It's still more powerful than you would have had originally, and we've tested it so that you still are able to get around in most scenarios. But if you need that little bit of extra boost, you can turn that eco lock off and it releases way more power of the Tesla motor to actually get you where you need to go. things that go into an electric conversion, whether that's sourcing parts or fabrication or design, and so much of that comes to light with this latest conversion. It's been a wonderful point where everything we've been working on has really come together with a vehicle that's been able to show that off in such an incredible way. It's been a real pleasure to work on this vehicle, and it's been really great to take all of the things that we've learned from this, the skills that we've learned, and the people that we've brought onto the project to help with it, to move on to some of our other projects as well. If you have projects that you would like to consider for electric conversion, whether that's something like a variant, or whether it's something like a camper van, then please get in touch and let us know the goals that you have for your project. My name has been Kit Lacey from edupconversions.co.uk. You can get hold of us in loads of different ways. You can go to our website, where there's a contact us box at the top. You can also call us. We're in the UK on 01423 421 950. There will always be someone at the end of the phone willing to talk to you about your goals for your project. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.